In this video, I'm going to show you how we can play around with the routing of an RC500, not just for the inputs, but for the loops as well. Hey, what's going on? It's JP here. Welcome to the channel. If you've never been here before and you want to learn all about music tech and looping, then start now by clicking the subscribe button, hit that bell, and you won't miss anything. So I've been getting lots of questions about the RC500, but one that sticks out a lot is about routing. Lots of you have figured out you can route the microphone and the input A and input B, but I'm getting questions about routing the actual loops. Even though you've routed the inputs, the loops themselves are actually coming out of both channels. So today I'm gonna to show you how we can change that and all the options to do with routing. Now before we get going, I have something free for you. If you're into looping and you want some pro tips from me, I've created a PDF that is now on my website that you can download and keep. All you've gotta do is go to johnpaulmusic.co.uk, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see the link there. Okay, let's move over to the desk, and let's solve this routing problem. Hi, so you join us at the desk. Now, this looks really complicated, but it really isn't. This microphone is only here so you can hear me a little bit easier, and then this microphone is the one that's plugged into the RC500. We've also got my guitar as well, which is plugged in on input A, which traditionally would be the left in. We've also got left and right out, or input A and input B out, and that's going over to the speaker so I can hear it. It's also been duplicated into the phone so you can hear it as well. So we're on memory number five. It's completely blank track. I've not altered it at all. And I'm just gonna put a quick loop down. So all I've done is I've used track number one, I haven't used track number two for this example, and we've got my vocals coming in, and we've got the guitar coming in. Now the one thing you need to remember is the inputs and also the loops. So the input for the guitar and the microphone are coming in on their own inputs, but they're going both out to A and B. And then also the loop is coming out on both A and B as well. So the first thing is changing the inputs and changing their destination. How we do that is we actually go over to the input button, and we scroll across one and you'll see that mic in is out A and B. We can click that, we can change that to whatever you want. So for this example, I'm gonna put the mic to out A and then the instruments, if you go across one, it says out A and B. I'm gonna put that to out B. Now when I get out of there, that's what most people do and then they freak out because the loops are still coming out of both A and B together and they've forgotten to do something. All we need to do is we need to go over to track one and track two and change the outputs of those as well. Remember the track loops are not the outputs. So we need to change the outputs of the loops as well as the outputs of the instruments and microphone. So let's go over to here to track one and let's just keep scrolling across and eventually you'll get to track input. Now the input we want on track one, we want all of them. But then if you go to mic in only, track one will only take in the microphone and therefore basically you can also say just the instruments in. Or you can just say instrument in A or instrument in B. So if you wanna split it up, you can do, you can do that as well. Or you can say mic and instrument. So it takes in the mic and the instrument and that's fine. But then what you can do is when we go to track one output, this is where we can duplicate how we're actually outputting the sounds. So we can say all, or we can say out A or out B. So for this example, what I wanna do is the actual track one, I only wanna come out of one side and then you want track B coming out of the other. Now this can get complicated because of course, if you've only got the microphone going out of track A, but you've got all of track one loops, which include guitar loops going out of track A, it might sound a bit odd. But if you said it correctly, you can have all of the vocal loops coming out of one output and all the guitar loops coming out of another output. So for now, in this example, track one, I've said to out A. Let's go over to track two, and we're gonna do exactly the same thing. And the nice thing as well is if you don't exit and you go across to where you need, if I just press the second track, it'll just jump over. I don't have to re-go through the menu, which is really nice. So then let's change this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change track two to out B. So for this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase the loop, and then track one is gonna be my vocal, and then track two is gonna be the guitar. Now the thing we've got to remember is how to structure the loop and how you are rooted both in and out, but also how the loops are rooted out as well. Now let's give this a go. Now if you're listening to this in headphones or if you've got stereo speakers, you're gonna be hearing things coming out of just the left and just the right. The idea behind this is we're sending two separate mono feeds so you can put that to a mixer so you can mix it in mono independently. Boom, boom, 
So now we've got our vocal just coming out of the left, which is input number one. Let's put down some guitar. as well now this is just one particular example just remember that this is the inputs so for example the mic input we can have as a and b or a or we can have as off or what we can do is if we actually get out of there let's just put that back to there or with the instrument you can have a and b you can have a b or off but the thing to remember is how you set up the tracks so again going into tracks go all the way to the end and go back one it's just easier to switch it all over. And then you can go input, track one input is the mic and the instrument, but we know they're coming in independently from each channel now. So you can have the input as mic and instrument, and you can have the output as A, B, or if we scroll back there, we have all. Now a quick alternative to input is obviously we've got it down as mic and instrument. If you go back, you can have instrument in B, instrument in A, and then you can have just instrument in, which is both, because of course you've got a stereo in, you've got a left and a right, or input one and input two. So you could actually have a guitar and maybe a keyboard in mono, and you could have it independently if you wanted to. The alternative, of course, is just for track one, you could just have the mic. The reason you would have this is because you could actually keep on playing whilst you're actually recording down track one. Maybe you're just doing beatboxing, or you're just singing harmonies, and you only want that recorded, but you still want to play, but you don't want that going through the looper. Same goes for the instrument in, maybe you only want the instrument to be recorded into the loop whilst you're singing that's really really useful you could lay down some chords whilst you're singing the first verse it can speed that process up and again the instrument inputs there's two of them so there's an input one and an input two so you can actually split them so we could have only instrument a and only instrument b or we can have it all going in to the one track just remember to write this to the memory it is memory dependent so you can have something completely different on the next memory up don't forget to grab my PDF on pro looping tips. Just head to my website, johnpaulmusic.co.uk, and it's at the bottom of the page. Now, I've done loads of videos about the RC5 and the RC500, but if you want to have a look at the pedal settings, as in changing these pedals and what they do, and also change the rhythm settings, have a look at this video.